The views and opinions expressed by the participants on this show are not necessarily those of Stewart Information Services Corporation, Stewart Title, or Stewart Insurance. Before you make any investment, you should seek the advice of your investment advisor or attorney. Whether you're a real estate broker, realtor, homeowner, buyer, or seller, everything matters when it comes to real estate. This is Real Estate Matters with Stored Title. Stored Title's Bill Napick and guests open the door to what really matters in owning, buying, and selling real estate. And now, Real Estate Matters with Stored Title, brought to you by Stuart Insurance. Here to inform, entertain, and inspire, Bill Napick. And welcome to the show. It is Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title. I'm your host, Bill Nampick. Thank you for joining us again on this radio adventure and supersonic real estate market almost everywhere. But we're focusing today right here in Houston, Texas. So we have a tremendous show for you. We also like to remind you, especially lately, every show that you can see and hear. That's right. You can see the show to past shows and the complete show roster at stewart.com forward slash radio. That's stewart.com forward slash radio. And it is about time to get down to business. So let's talk to our first guest. She is Mariella Massa. She's the president of the Houston Mortgage Bankers Association. She's the CEO and founder of an app called FinHouse and involved on the board with Appraisal MC. Very busy. Mariella, welcome to the show. Bill, thank you so much for having me. It's so great to be here with you. It's a busy time of year, but I know we have a lot of fun things to talk about. Indeed, and you are a very busy, accomplished <laughs> person. In fact, as I was looking on the internet, you were one of the most admired CEOs in 2019, the top five, actually. So you're doing incredible work. So let's tell people, first of all, the many ventures that you have. First, about the Houston Mortgage Bankers Association. Yeah, let's start with uh, the HMBA. So uh, currently president of the Trade Association, Houston Mortgage Bankers Association. It's a wonderful uh, volunteer organization organized by peers in our community, and it's mostly lenders and vendors involved in the uh, real estate community. One of the things that we're aiming to do is to just bring awareness to the legislation process that goes on in the background and just be involved and connected with the TMBA on a state level and MBA on a national level. So we're basically the local uh, version of the Mortgage Bankers Association. We meet once a month, typically at a luncheon. We have had luncheons for the last few months. It's been going great. Super safe with uh, COVID protocols in place, you know, masks upon entering, and then uh, some spaced out uh, events. But every month, we typically have a wonderful speaker that's a local person to the community. Could be, you know, the chair of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Uh, we've had someone from the Astros, uh, Texans, Mattress Mac, et cetera, doctors in the local area as well come speak at our luncheons and talk about different sectors in the space in Houston and how the uh, real estate community is involved. So it's it's a fabulous organization. And in fact, when you were saying it's a local organization, yeah, local in the fourth largest city in the United <laughs> States. So the role and your position is a very big one and an important one in keeping people informed and as far as all the things going on as well. In the midst of as far as mortgage and rates, we're in the midst of so many milestones in real estate, lowest interest rates maybe ever as far as I know, but they're certainly low, the supersonic market that's going on. You all have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's that's, I think, one of the powers of the organization is the engagement of all of our peers together, competitors coming together and talking about solutions driven, so, solutions to problems, right? Uh, right now, there's a lot of uh, kinks in the in the real estate process with multiple offers going on. You know, appraisals are taking a while. Uh, lenders are overloaded as well. You know, there's just a lot that we can do as a, as a group to collectively try to find a better solution. But one of the things about the Houston Mortgage Bankers Association is, is the people, right? So we have uh, over 250 members that are pretty active in the Houston area. We've got a fabulous board uh, that has been in tenure for quite some time. And we've got great events. I'll tell you, Bill, next month we're revitalizing our golf tournament, and it's going to be on May 6th at Black Horse, Black Horse Golf Course. I'm sad to say that we are sold out of teams, but I'm happy to say that we still have some sponsorships available. Uh, if you're looking for sponsorships and being engaged in the real estate community, we still have whole sponsors and raffle items, but it's going to be a fabulous event. Uh, lots of fun. We have 36 teams, lenders and vendors from all across Houston. We even have people flying in from out of state to come play in the golf tournament, which is super exciting. Yeah, I think people are ready to travel again, too. Yeah, 
ready to get out, have fun, engage, and just, you know, be with like-minded people. That's one of the biggest things about the Houston Mortgage Bankers Association. And as far as, is, is it a monthly meeting that, other than the golf uh, tournament? Is it a monthly meeting that you have? Yeah, so uh, usually it's the second Wednesday of every month, and we meet at Maggiano's on Post Oak. We do about nine luncheons a year, and we'll have, as I mentioned, a, a really great speaker come and talk about different sectors uh, within the Houston space that are important, right? Energy, healthcare, our sports teams, uh, even real estate matters, ex- et cetera. So kind of like the name of the show, uh, real right, estate. There yeah. you go. I'm tying it in for sure. Uh, so we just are super blessed to have really great speakers, a wonderful board, and a very active membership committee. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a member, best way to find us is obviously there's this really great little tool called Google. Houston Mortgage Bankers Association, it'll take you to our website, which is hmba.wildapricot.org. Uh, you can sign up as a member. There's wonderful benefits, uh, not just meeting great people, but we also have uh, tools and a library that you can use as well and connect with other contacts within the Houston space. And when you mentioned the meeting other people, that's one of the draws for me. The times I've been to the meeting is to see the other real estate professionals out there. Some of them are in new ventures and things. So it's always great to catch up. And I think there's the little bit of the pent up demand right now. So I think our gatherings that we are in at the HMBA and, and all these other things, I think they're gonna have a little bit more life to them, I'm just guessing this year. And I think it's gonna be fun. Absolutely. Uh, last month, we had a really great panel of five realtors. I heard about it, yes. Yeah, and uh, they were all from different parts of the city. So we got to hear you know, what happened in downtown over the last year, what's happening in the future, Woodlands, Memorial, uh, Central, you know, South Houston as well. So it was really great to hear from some of the top producing professionals and just get their perspective on what's going on and what's about to happen. Let's tell people who should go to the meetings and, and the events and also who should be a member. Absolutely. So really, we're we're open arms to anybody in the real estate space. Traditionally, it's been mostly lenders, loan officers, anyone involved in compliance and production as well. Vendors as well. We welcome, you know, appraisers, inspectors, title companies, uh, attorney companies as well. We have, you know, wonderful sponsors from all of these different types of companies that are listed on our website. And we support one another. So that's one of the great things, too, is We don't just go there to network and engage, but we also support each other in our businesses and in our personal lives. And now your other venture is recent called FinHouse. It's an app. Let's tell people about that. Who should know about this app? FinHouse, F-I-N-H-O-U-S. Absolutely. So so this has been a passion project that I've been working on for a little over a year. My traditional role has been in the appraisal space for the last 20 years uh, since I graduated from college and worked in the appraisal business. So I own a national appraisal company and exited there about a year ago to work on this app. And really what this app is, is a tool to help home buyers through the home buying process. So it gives you everything you have to do before your closing date, like ordering your movers, uh, getting quotes for insurance, turning on your uh, utilities on and off at your previous place and at your new place, gives you all the reminders in a quick app to-do list. And it also helps you shop quotes for all of those other services. So we're basically unifying the realtor, lender, title agent, insurance agent, and everyone involved that would touch the house or service the house in one uh, centralized app. And like a checklist. Exactly. So, um, you know, I've, you know, we've all been through, or most of us have been through the home buying process, right? And usually your realtor gives you a a Word document or emails you a Word document of all their favorite vendors. Now they can upload and invite all of their favorite vendors into this app and share it with their past homeowners and also their current home buyers to help them through this process. So I came up with this as I was buying a house the last time, you know, it was kind of muscle memory of what do I need to do next? You know, there's all the things you have to deal with with the realtor, lender, and contracts. But what about all those other things that you have to deal with, like buying, uh, moving supplies, et cetera? Um, so I came up with this idea just to kind of break it off into bits, into little pieces where we can simplify the process and make it less stressful. Give us a quick word on the the concept of having an idea. Many of us have ideas that we don't act upon, and sometimes we shouldn't act upon them. Maybe they're not going to be <laughs> successful. Who knows? But you had this idea. It's launching now. And from the time it was an idea to where you actually put it together, give us an idea of the timeline and some of the other things to maybe encourage other people out there that might have have something that they're, that could be great. Yeah, I will say this idea from idea to reality has taken about a year and a half. So we're launching the app in Houston this week. So by the time you're hearing this today, you'll be able to 
to download this app on Google or uh, Apple as well. And really what it comes down to, number one, is it really a necessity? So talking to people and seeing if there's really a need for this. Are you solving a problem? It turns out uh, after our due diligence and we hired a, a third party company to help us out with this research, we are solving a problem. Buying a house can be stressful and this helps simplify that process. And then second, really, it's about time and money right? How much time are you willing to put into it? And it's going to take some money to build the app. Uh, so it's really those, you know, those are probably step two and three is figuring out your time to do it and the money to have to do it as well and then take it to execution. How long did it take you to put this list together of things? Because as you're making the yeah. checklist for the app, you have to be saying, oh, I hope I don't forget this. There's probably always one more thing that you want to put on it. Absolutely. I'm guessing. This is, you know, the beauty of this app and why I think it'll be so successful is that over time we'll keep adding more and more things on there. And I will tell you, I, I just went through this process by myself, uh, going through buying a house, um, actually closing today, closing and funding today. So I was able to actually use my app in a real life situation and it had everything that I needed. I think I we, we think we remembered everything we needed. And here's the beauty, Bill. If you don't have it already on the app, you can add tasks on there as well. If there's a unique task to yourself, we can add it into the app and have it remind you as well. And this is going to soon be available outside of Houston, but nationally. Is that right? Absolutely. So, you know, Houston is my home base. We love our, our network of people here. We're starting to share it with the real estate community. So we're doing a beachhead approach and starting in Houston and then expanding throughout Texas. And then after we dominate Texas, we're moving on to other markets outside of Texas. Because certainly in other areas, there's other things that are considerations, perhaps taxes and ordinances or whatever else. So there's always something a little bit different about each place. Exactly, exactly. So we wanted to start in the biggest and best market. And luckily, it's our backyard. There you go. Let's tell people how they can get the app. Absolutely. So Finhouse, F-I-N-H-O-U-S dot com. Uh, you can download the app on the Apple Store, and it's also available on the Android Store as well. Uh, set up your account, takes uh, less than 30 seconds, and then you're ready to go. It'll send you all the information you need to get started. Give us a quick word about appraisals. You know a little bit about that, <laughs> to say the least. What are some of the things that people don't know about appraisals? And, and maybe they should know just as common knowledge, of, uh, whether it's their home or whether it's their business that they own the building. Tell, tell us about it. Demystify it in yeah, one minute. <laughs> absolutely. So, you know, one one thing that I want to help our, our, our listeners right now, I know that appraisals are a pressure point right now in the process. For lenders, realtors, and even home buyers out there, make sure that your lender is ordering the appraisal as quickly as possible. The quicker the order is assigned, the quicker you'll get it back and you'll avoid delays. Uh, that's kind of my biggest voice of, of reason right now. And I know it sounds obvious, but there's so many other things going on. This is one piece of the pie that you have to pay attention to because appraisals are backtracked right now because of the supply of appraisers. There's only X amount of supply of appraisers. And when the demand goes up, that extends uh, the timelines as well. So make sure you're ordering those appraisals quickly. Make sure the lender that you're working with has a great relationship with their appraisal management company and with their appraisal uh, panel. So that's another important factor to look at as well. And you're doing many things. You're successful at so many things. Let's tell people, give us a, a quick success tip as far as how you stay organized being president of the Houston Mortgage Bankers Association, this new app, and still being a part of the appraisal business. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I live by my calendar. I, I go where where Siri tells me to go. So I think part of the major organization of being able to do so many things and do them well is making sure you have the time to do them. I have to say no to a lot of things, um, but I want to stay focused on the things that I'm committed to. And I do that by having great support with my assistant and the rest of my team uh, and relying on some really fabulous people. And then number two, just, you know, living to my calendar, waking up a little bit earlier if I want to add on more things to, you know, get more hours in the day. In fact, that's a good word. Two very simple one-syllable words that can make or break our timeline. The word no and the <laughs> word yes, what we agree to. Yeah. Let's tell people, again, the website for the Houston Mortgage Bankers Association. Also, we'll remind them about the app. Absolutely. So we'd love to have you as a member of the Houston Mortgage Bankers Association. We'd love to have you visit us as well. Visit one of our luncheons. Our website is hmba.wildapricot.org. And if you want to find us on FinHouse and download the app, it's available in Houston now, F-I-N-H-O-U-S, available on the Apple Store and on Android. Thank you so much, Mariella Massa. Thanks for being on the show. Hey, Bill, thanks for having me. We're glad you said yes. <laughs> 
If you're a real estate professional, then listen closely. Cyber criminals are targeting our industry. They are impersonating real estate professionals, home buyers, sellers, and title agents. Their goal is to gain access to your inboxes, computers, and clients so they can steal information and funds. Does your business insurance offset these risks? Not sure? Contact Stewart Insurance to determine if your business is properly insured. Visit StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. Visit StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. And now we're going to talk to Rodney Tureen. He is with Remax Northwest. Hey, Rodney, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Real estate. I don't know. I, I, first time I said it's a supersonic market today, Rodney, on this show. I've described it as so many other things. But the market is pretty brisk, to say the least, right? It is. It's very brisk right now. Trying to find the right property for the right person at the right price is got some challenges. That's why you need a great real estate professional, just like your company. First of all, Rodney, let's tell people about your company, Remax Northwest. Well, Remax Northwest has been around for several decades. Um, I've been an agent at Remax Northwest for seven years. Um, I have uh, the Tureen Real Estate Group. We have uh, a buyer's agent, uh, Diana Chavez, that has just joined us, and we are ready to expand our reach through Cypress, Magnolia, the Woodlands, uh, North Houston, Klein, Spring. We cover the whole area. And to say those are very active areas, I mean, all areas are active right now, but I hear so much about that Northwest. Tell us what's, uh, first of all, if someone's, even in Houston, I think there's a it, there's a bit of a mystery as to what designates that area in the various towns, but especially if we have listeners that might be tuning in on, on the internet from, I don't know, Pennsylvania or wherever else. Describe this part of the Houston market, if you would, geographically. Uh, geographically, Northwest would be considered anything pretty much north and west of downtown, up the 290 corridor, uh, out towards West Houston, Katy, Cyprus, um, up towards Tomball. Our reach at Northwest is pretty extensive. We have agents all the way out in Porter, up in Magnolia, uh, and even over into the Cyprus area. As far as if someone, again, is listening from far away or have they not been in this area, what's it look like geographically? Paint, paint the picture. Let's say someone wants to move into that area from Pennsylvania. What are they going to see? What's it going to look like? Uh, there's actually a, a wide range of, of properties available. Uh, there's lots of established neighborhoods out in that area. There's a lot of new construction going on, but there's also a, a very rural feel to it. When you get uh, a little bit farther out closer to the Grand Parkway, lots of places out there with one and two acre lots, just a lot of properties coming on the market, not near enough for what the demand is, but it's got a little of some, a little something for everyone. And I think that's one of the things that's attractive to people, not just coming from afar, but if I'm living, well, I don't know, even even in Katy or closer to the city for years in, in the Houston area, and I want to go out for that rural feel, I don't have to go that far to get it in, in the Northwest that you're talking about. Not really. It's, it's interesting. We have people who live in Cyprus or in Katy that used to be the rural feel are now wanting to move even further out towards Waller, uh, out north of the Tomball area because there's you got more elbow room out there. So you don't have to move, move very far, and you still can have the wide open spaces. And I'm going to say, is my in my estimation, elbow room is at a premium these days, and people more people are looking for it than ever before. Give us an idea. In, in your office, What where is the actual office located? Our office is located at Stubner Airline and Cypresswood. And what town is that in? It's in Spring. So it's actually but, Spring. Yeah, we're essentially a stone's throw from a Houston address. So in Spring, and I get confused, you have Spring, Magnolia, and Tomball. Give us a different, where, where, where are they different? They're close to each other, right? Uh, well, Spring straddles 45, extends up into the Woodlands area. Magnolia is uh, to the northwest of that area. And then Tomball is to the southeast or just south of Magnolia up along the 249 corridor. And when you're working with, let's say, buyers right now, what are some of the things in the spring area that they're looking for, and how hard is it right now to buy a home there? And let's uh, I'll just pick a price point at random. Let's say someone wants to spend $400,000. They're in that range, and they come to you. Rodney, 
I want to buy a house in the spring area. I want some elbow room. Am I going to be able to get something in that room? Or what will I be able to get for four hundred? Uh, the 400000 price range, there's actually quite a bit of property to look at out there. Whether it fits that client's needs for 400000 with a pool on 10,000 square feet or not is going to take some looking. You're reading my mind. I forgot to say I wanted a pool, too, right? <laughs> you got to have a pool. Or, or the opposite, where somebody says, I absolutely do not want a pool. Because it goes both ways. So it's important to, to get that checklist of the most important items – and sometimes the most important items are the no's. Absolutely do not want a two-story. Absolutely do not want a pool. Things like that. There's just not enough property on the market to suit all of the buyers who are looking right now. And so it gets very competitive. And as I said, that's why you need a strong real estate professional in this market. But how are you helping those buyers right now in terms of what are the things they need to do? So if we see the property that, that I'm looking for with the right criteria... How, how, what's the best strategy to get that, navigating the multiple offers situation that it seems like it's on almost every home that's sold? I, may be, I hope I'm wrong, but I have a feeling I might not be. It, it, it's close. I think the most important thing for a buyer or even a seller, but for a buyer to have is an agent that is going to, is going to help them manage their expectations because the expectation is, well, I've been pre-approved, so I should be able to get this house because I offered them their list price. But there's so many additional things that go into that, such as how quickly the houses are, are coming on the market, how quickly they are going under contract. I mean, I've seen properties that have come on that say zero days on market because it went active at 8 o'clock in the morning. And by the time my client has called me at 1 and said, let's get out there and see it, it's gone. Uh, they'll have three offers. They'll say highest and best by five. Just being able to manage their expectations of what happens when they're on the market is is important. But I would say for any buyer, you've got to have your pre-approval or your pre-qualification letter because you're not going to be able to put an offer in without it. And so looking at properties, scheduling showings, falling in love with something, and then then saying, okay, this is the one I want, and you tell them you, they want highest and best by noon tomorrow, now they're scrambling to get a lender. Putting all of the steps together beforehand – is going to be helpful to them so that they don't get caught behind an eight ball and go, okay, well, I missed out on it because I wasn't prepared. Okay, so let's say someone is a cash buyer, and they and even people that are ready in terms of financing, they're approved. But as far as cash buyers out there, how would you advise someone that says, okay, Rodney, I want to use your services. I'm a cash buyer. What What's your advice there? Well, cash buyer is does have an advantage because usually they can close faster. They may not require or desire an appraisal. They may do their own inspection. If they're a cash buyer, they may be this may be something where they've done several times. They know what to look for and want to move quickly. Time really is of the essence. A cash buyer has the benefit of being able to close in 10, 12, 14 days. I've even seen it as quick as seven days. But the problem is that there are many cash buyers out there. Oh, so wrong. you have so you have cash buyers competing for the same property, and all of them have the same mindset of, <laughs> okay, I, I can close in 10 days. No, I can close in eight days. So it is a world full of buyers out there. That's what we've determined. It's yes. crazy, isn't it? It Where is. Where are all the buyers coming from, I wonder? Well, uh, we do have an influx of people moving into Houston. Houston, uh, even aside from our humidity, is a very desirable place to live because of the opportunities here. So if you have people moving in, they need a place to live. We also have buyers who want to either uh, upsize, or maybe they want to downsize, or maybe they just want to move a little further out. But the problem that we have is that if they put their house on the market, are they going to be able to find something to move to? And so now we have uh, not enough properties on the market, but too many people who are out there looking for something to buy, and it's definitely a seller's market right now. And as far as the sellers go, someone wants to list their home, how are you advising them? You make that home as appealing as possible. Listen to your real estate agent when they tell you what you need to do to, to draw in the most buyers and get that top dollar. Because just because it's a seller's market doesn't mean you can put a property on the market that doesn't have good curb appeal or it needs very noticeable repairs. We are seeing some of that. The people just put it out there thinking, well, someone's going to buy. Well, they won't. We still have discerning buyers. Right. You have to have, it has to be ready in both cases, and you have to be prepared as the buyer, as the seller. In fact, this weekend in the Katy area, I noticed in my neighborhood there were two 
uh, open houses. So there's still open houses, I guess, being being uh, conducted, and I guess they gather all the the interest, and from that they'll have an offer or two, I would think. Uh, very often that is the case. Open houses are a great way to market an area because sometimes you can pick up somebody or you can pick up a buyer in a particular area. They didn't really know that they wanted to live there. They were driving through. Um, I've had that several times. Somebody would come in, take a look at the house, say, this is not for me, but here's what I'm looking for. And then we were able to find them the property that suited their needs. We're talking with Rodney Tureen with 3 Max Northwest. Rodney, before we close the segment, what else would you like people to know? I think the, the most important thing for any buyer or seller right now is when you, uh, when you choose a real estate agent to represent you, make sure it's somebody that you want to spend some time with. This is a relationship business. It might be a relationship for a transaction or it might be a relationship for multiple transactions over time. But it's got to be somebody that you believe is hearing your needs and is being responsive and not trying to move you into something that you don't want, but will actually take the time to get you uh, what you want as your home. And that's what we try to do at the Train Real Estate Group is to listen, to follow through, and work from the for sale to close. And if someone wants to reach out to you, what should they do? Um, our website has a, a huge amount of information on it. It's at www.terrine, that's T-H-O-R-I-N, dot for sale. It has information about our philosophy on business. It has uh, information about customer experience and links to very important real estate data. Or I can be reached on my cell phone. I answer my own calls, 832-723-0740. One more time. 832-723-0740. Thank you so much, Rodney Tureen. Thank you. Also with the Tureen Real Estate Group, we have Amanda Tureen. Amanda, welcome to the show. Hey, Bill. Thanks for having me. And I know you from a previous position. We're glad to have you right here today. Th- thanks so much. The Tureen Real... You know Rodney Tureen, right? I do. I married him. How about that? So that is teamwork, no doubt. Let's tell people on the Tureen team what you're doing. So I work as um, quote unquote business development, but a lot of what that entails is twofold. One, working on the side of our team and making sure that our realtors um, have all the advancements that they need in order to do their job well. We work with a lot of our title companies like Stewart and others that do training uh, in order to make sure that all the new things that are out uh, for to make agents' lives better and to help them make better educated decisions for their clients, uh, that they have all those things at their fingertips, uh, as well as helping make sure that all of our clients feel like they get that personal touch, working with them on their preparing for their open houses, making sure that they are staged and ready to go for pictures and all of those types of things that are going to help sell that property. And that's, a, a, as, as we think about real estate, the process of buying and selling is just a process with many, many details. And all of them are so important. They are. They're extremely important. And it can be very overwhelming to the person who hasn't done this day in, day out for the last five to seven years. Um, You have to approach every client as if this is the first and only property that they will ever buy. It's amazing the things that they just don't realize that they need to be doing. And you look at that long list and we think, oh, we can do that. We do it every day. But this is their first time. And walking them through and making sure that they have everything they need to be prepared and to be comfortable with the process is extremely important to the Tureen Real Estate Group. And then there's the factor that each and every real estate transaction is a little different. It's like a fingerprint. They're not all the same every time. Exactly. Every single buyer and every single um, seller is different. And those relationship skills are hard um, to maneuver at times. You, we have worked with veterans. We have worked with um, couples who are have an impending divorce, um, happy families who are you know upgrading their homes. But e- at each and every point in that journey, it is different because it's personal to that person or that family. In fact, that also helps us develop our listening skills even better because we have to tune in to each and every situation as you're describing it. 
Exactly. You know, the worst thing that can happen is for a real estate agent to walk into a situation and think that they can just check the boxes. We uh, encourage actually all of our new clients to go through a, an interview process with us. Sit down. Let's have a cup of coffee. Let's make sure that this relationship is going to have some ease to it, that we understand you and you understand us. Our communication is clear. That way, this process will be easy for you, and then we can help you with my, what might be the largest purchase that you will make. I like what you just said. We want to make sure that there's some ease to it. I've never heard it put quite like that. That's brilliant. Thank you. Did you come up with that yourself? Actually, my husband and I talk about that all the time because he was not, he was a, a homeowner when we married. And when oh. we sold that home and purchased our home, I was a first time home buyer. And there was not a whole lot of ease in that tra- transaction as I didn't understand and had a million and one questions. And I just kept asking, be patient and help me to understand. So when we walk into situations with clients, we You've keep that yeah. in the back of our minds that who who was I at that point, and what did I need to make me feel comfortable? Well, that's amazing. That is exactly right. So, and especially that could come into a bigger play sometimes with the brand, the first time homeowner or first time home buyer. Oh, exactly. This is an extremely terrifying situation for someone who has never even considered it before. And as you're having younger, um, our millennials and our younger adults that are have the finances to be able to afford to purchase, um, a, whether it's a townhome or a condo or even a larger single family um, property, this is a big expense. And it's different than any other type of contract that you're going to enter into. And as I mentioned, the first time home buyer, I just suddenly thought that we were going to buy a home for the first time. And I'm talking to other people about that potential and that decision. I'm going to be hearing, oh, man, you're not going to find a home. It's so hard. It's a this. The interest rates are so low. I mean, they're bombarded at this point. And you're saying, as you're saying, it's like mystified. So that's even more something to help someone with. Yes, and there's a lot of information out there. Right now, yes, we are not having as many properties on the market on some of those price points as we would like. However, it's not impossible to buy a new home right now. If you are a veteran, we hear this all the time and it breaks my heart. Oh, you don't want to use those uh, veteran services. You don't want to go in with those veteran loans or our first responders and teachers. You don't want to go in under USDA. You don't want to do that. It's too much trouble. But It's not. With a good realtor helping walk you through this process, you have earned through the types of jobs that you've done, the service you've done for this country, country. that we can help you have those um, privileges and rights that we have for you. That's right. In fact, in a broader sense, every situation is helped better with the right real estate professional. Exactly. And probably the best thing that can happen for you is to feel like your real estate agent hears you, is listening to you, and is your advocate. Of course, the other thing that comes into play for every real estate professional is that it's a round-the-clock type of deal. I mean, you might get a call at 9 o'clock, I'm guessing, about people worried they're going to close the next day, or they're, they did. How many times are people calling, did they take my offer? Or, you know, that, I mean, I can only imagine. I'm, I mean, being married to a realtor, we get calls at all times a day. Even walking in here to see you, Bill, we were um, having Rodney was dealing with a situation that has been going on for about five days that I think is going to have a happy ending. Um, by the end of today, we'll know for sure. But, you know, that's part of this whole process. And we tell new agents that are uh, working with us, uh, you're going to build a relationship with each and every one of your clients. And it's not going to be a burden to answer the text at 10 o'clock at night. It's not going to be a burden to answer the phone at 730 because you actually care about what's happening to them and what's happening for their family. That's right. And it also gives another perspective to the actual closing because the closing is is a magnificent event because so many things come together at that time when both parties close and all the things that happen in the beginning from the idea to buy or sell and all that. It's just a super event, I think. Oh, it's fantastic. One of the best things that we get to do is sit at a closing table with our clients and congratulate them on the new sale, on the sale or new purchase of a home. It's, it is a life-changing event for them. Amanda, what are some of the other things you want people to know about what you're doing there at the Tureen Group? 
We strive every single day to make sure that we are listening to what our clients are needing and going out and exploring it. Your guests here today have opened our eyes to some of the things that uh, we have not even heard of yet that we are excited to offer to our clients. It's important for us to know, for our clients to know that we uh, we work for them 24-7 and we care about them and their families and, and what's happening in their lives. and. Buying a new property or selling their property should be a joy. At this point in your role at the company, how much do you even have to go out and market uh, your company? Do you do that still, or are you just getting so much business coming in? How does that work? We still market the company quite a bit. Unfortunately, there um, are a lot of people out there who have not had great experiences with realtors. So we spend a lot of time going out and meeting with people um, and, and interviewing with them. We also try to reach out to those unlikely buyers, those people who think that they might not be able to to be able to buy, and we reach out to them and and put them in touch with resources that give them a better opportunity to know whether or not this is something that is is honestly possible for them at this stage in their lives. You know, I've just thought of a great marketing tool. If I were a realtor, I'd want to be on the radio. Yes, radio's great. Especially 950 KPRC and Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title. Exactly. That's why we're here. And before we close the segment, what else do you want people to know? Now, if you're thinking about buying or selling, now is the time. Now's the time. Now is the time. I was wondering. It really is. Rates are so low. Even if you have cash, bring your cash. Call the Tureen Group. Let's tell people how they can reach out to you, Amanda. So you can contact me directly at 281-989-6011, and I will put you right in touch with one of our capable agents. Or you can re- reach us as a group at homes at Tureen. That's T-H-O-R-I-N dot group. And the phone number again? 281-989-6011. Thank you, Amanda Tureen. Thanks, Bill. I say it all the time, stay close to your Stuart Title Business Development Officer. And guess what? We have Lynn Riddle here. She is our Business Development Officer. Lynn, welcome to the show. Hey there, Bill. And let's tell people about your office. Yes, we are located at 19450 State Highway 249, Suite 250, right next to Lowe's. And I hear it's magnificent. It's beautiful. Kim McCall has done tremendous work once again. Let's tell people a little bit about the ambiance and some of the great closers you have there. Well, I'll start with the closers because obviously they're phenomenal. And I am going to toot my own horn a little bit. I got President's Club for the second year in a row. That is right. Yeah, and that is because of those closers. I always say I can bring people in, but they keep them. They do a phenomenal job. I have four of them. I have a commercial escrow officer three residential escrow officers, and they can handle any type of real estate transaction that you might have. They do a fantastic job. I also have a bilingual Spanish-speaking escrow officer, too. That is awesome. And once again, congratulations. I mean, Thank to be you. able to be in the President's Club two years, I mean, you're you're working, yeah. you're making it happen. So, And also, let's tell people the names of the closers. We have Rebecca Whip. She is our manager. We have Dana Duncan. She's our commercial escrow officer. We have Crystal Monteforte. She is another residential and commercial closer. And then finally, we have Martha Martin. She's our bilingual Spanish-speaking closer. That's awesome, yeah. yeah. The other thing, when I, when I, and I say this is with all sincerity, stay close to the Stewart Title Business Development Officer like you, Lynn Riddle, and all the others around the Houston area. And even outside of our, our Texas area, we have, we're an international company. Many yeah. people don't know that. However, the reason they should is because you put on educational events, right. as everyone else does fun events, networking things, all sorts of things. Give us an idea of of some of the things you put together and if you have anything coming up in the near future. Well, the biggest thing I've been working on because a huge problem that realtors are having right now is getting listings. Yeah. And it's because people may not know that they want to sell their homes yet. And I have a way that we can pull farms and we can look up information on people who may have a certain amount of equity, who may have been there for a certain amount of time. And those are classes that I'm doing one-to-one. They can come in. So if you're having trouble getting listings, call me. Let's schedule a one-to-one, and I can help you with that. I would call that a marketing tool. Yeah. Yeah. We got a few of those. Yep. I've got three classes coming up. I've got a business planning class on May t- May 13th. I have a 1031 exchange class on May 19th. 
I have a monthly networking happy hour that's going to happen every month, the third Thursday, and that's going to be at Little Woodrow's on 249. And then finally, I have an HOA addendum class. Since that's new, that's coming up May 25th. So I could see why you're in the President's Club. You're actually out there taking care of business in an incredible way. Just a little busy. That's what we do. There you go. Also, before we close the segment, Lynn, what else do you want people to know? Well, I just want them to know that we are here at Stewart Title Champions to help you grow your business, whatever it takes. We can help you with your marketing. We can help you with uh, making the closing experience fantastic. We're just here. So reach out to us. uh, Use us as a resource. And I knew you before Stuart Title. Yes, you and did. And you were successful in your previous role. But let's tell people, I mean, to be able to be su- as successful as you have been, I think I know some of the reasons you have great core principles of success. You do the right things at the right time. But give us a word, maybe one principle that has helped you, something that you've done your whole life that just always pays dividend. Maybe it's not easy to do, but whatever it is, what would that be? Well, what comes to mind right now is the BNI term, Business Networking International term, Giver's Gain. And my whole office practices that, where it's kind of the law of reciprocity. If you put good out there, you do good to others, then you in turn will have good things happen to you. So my closers, if you have questions on really, really tough files, even if we're not the ones closing that transaction, you can call them. They'll help you out with it because we know that you'll use us for the next one. Lynn Riddle, you are a true resource. Let's tell people how they can reach out to you. Well, they can call me on my cell phone, 346-225-7993. Or you can reach me at lynn.riddle at stewart.com. And the phone number again is? 346-225-7993. Once again, congratulations. Thank you, Bill. You're going to win next year, too. I'm just feeling it. I'm trying. I'm pushing for it. Thanks for being on the show. (laughs) Real Estate Matters with Stewart Title would not be possible without our partner, Stewart Insurance, with a focus in real estate and a special focus on real estate brokers. Stewart Insurance creates insurance plans to address the risks facing our industry today. They invest a significant amount of time helping real estate broker owners offset and manage their risk. Once again, he is here, John Bramlett with Stewart Insurance. Hey, John. Howdy, Bill. How are you? Doing great. Here we go. Another tremendous show. Always learning with each show. That's what I love about this. Yes, it's the the, the best part of the show is is the educational aspect. I mean, other than your entertaining voice and, yeah, and commentary, it's the it's the fantastic guests that we have and, and the knowledge that they provide our listeners. Yeah, the takeaway on this, if you really, seriously, if, if you take notes, and even if you hear a show a second time, you will hear things of an, of an informative nature that you didn't hear the first time. So, for example, you could go to stuart.com backslash radio and hear the show again. And see it as well. Oh, that's that's fantastic. And as we think about insurance, as we often do, what are we going to think about today or talk to the listeners? Today is a th- kind of a third installment in our uh, discussions about understanding an arrows and emissions policy. You know, in the past uh, couple of weeks, we've talked about the professional services section and what that means, what defense expenses are, you know, the fact that you need to make sure that there's coverage for independent contractors, uh, what the pollution uh, segment looks like and what you ought to consider from coverage as well as discrimination. So that's what we've talked about in, in the past. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about a couple more things that are that are part of a policy that you need to take a look at and consider. Um, the first one you'll hear sometimes referred to as BIPD, or bodily injury and property damage. So that is, uh, as, as it sounds, if somebody gets hurt or something is damaged, generally speaking, uh, bodily injury and property damage are excluded in an arrows emissions policy that um, insurance companies generally will want you to have that coverage through a general liability policy. And that's where it's specifically set up for folks that get hurt either at your office or maybe at a place that you're showing. Open house. Open house. Uh, But what it does do is provide some coverage uh, in the case they feel like that your lack of professionalism or your lack of being a professional has caused that injury. So there's a chance for some defense coverages. So you want to make sure that you work through with your, your insurance agent to understand uh, if there is any coverage just from the defense perspective. If somebody feels like that because of a lack of professionalism um, that there was an issue caused. You never know. 
It's all about the perspective of someone and, and even intent sometimes. Absolutely. And then kind of um, along with that is there's a, a bodily injury and property damage coverage specific for lockbox. So, again, it doesn't cover injuries or damages to the property. In most cases, that's a general liability property. But what it should do is cover anything that's caused by a lockbox. So, is for you know, generally that only pertains to residential real estate folks. But a lockbox basically controls the keys to a house that's up for sale. So it allows a realtor to have access to the home if the, the homeowners aren't there. Uh, and they've gotten to be much more sophisticated than just a traditional lock. But they're, but if if a professional, if a realtor um, or their guests did something that didn't secure the lock and somebody was able to get into the home and cause some damage or they damaged the lockbox itself or the technology itself, then there could be some some coverage for that. So we just need to make sure that the... Uh, you know that the realtor um, has a feel for the broker has a feel that they've got that coverage in their errors and emissions policy. I don't even have all the things to think about. I never thought about the perils that the lockbox can prevent. Absolutely, because I mean it's a it's a convenience, but there's a responsibility that goes with that that convenience, and we just need to make sure that that that's covered. And generally, it's going to be a sublimit. So if your liability is a million dollars per incident and a million dollars aggregate or a million dollars for the life of the of the plan, uh, there may be a sublimit to it. So it's important to know what that sublimit is because you may have coverage, but if the sublimit is $25,000, is that going to be enough? So again, it's important to have that conversation with your, your insurance provider. And those two words come into play in each and every insurance situation, whether it's errors and omission or just homeowner's insurance, and that is properly insured is are the key words. Absolutely, it is. Everybody's need is different. Uh, every policy's intent is different. So it's a matter of, you know, matching that policy, matching that plan with what the client's needs are. That's awesome. What are some of the other things we should think about? When you're looking at the one other item to take a look at when you're looking at your errors and omissions policy is in the insurance parlance, you'll hear the word personal injury. And that's where somebody feels like that during your professional services, you cause them harm by libel or slander, uh, something that you said, something you write hurt their business. Uh, so they'll sue you for that. So there should be some specific coverage for that in your policy. If there's not, some cases an insurance policy will have some defense coverages that will uh, cover things that are occurred or not occurred, uh, that are covered or uncovered. If you have that type of coverage, that could leave you uh, vulnerable to covering the cost yourself. So it's important to, one, to see if you have that personal injury coverage within your e plan, and if so, what's that coverage entail? Yeah, so many details, John. But to make it simple, people can – they have questions. They can call Stewart Insurance, and you could – your associates can go over the right kind of coverage, answer questions, even bring up questions they may not know to ask. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's important that they um, – that we have the time to have that conversation because we find out what's of concern. I'm working with a, a new realtor – I mean a new broker that's starting a, a brokerage firm, real estate brokerage firm in New York. And the thing that she's concerned about is making sure that she's got full discrimination coverage that we talked about in the in the first segment of this series, because there's a lot of discrimination cases that are taking place in New York State. So she's concerned about it. So one of the things that we'll convey when we're reaching out to our partners to to get the, the plan options will be that that's an important element for her. Because, again, it's it's not whether it's happened or not. It's whether somebody feels like it's happened. And if they have a claim, even if it's a frivolous claim, you still have defense costs. That's right. And uh, I'll tell you, defense costs, there's nothing worse than that except paying more than the asking price on a home. I'm just saying. I mean, that, but that's what you got to do these days. That's I'm what you got to do. That's correct. If I've that's learned correct. one thing from the show, it is that. Bring your money, make the best offer, and all those things. John, let's tell people how they can reach Stewart Insurance. Well, they can give us a call at 866 866- Seven nine eight two eight two seven. That's eight six six seven nine eight two eight two seven. They can email us at Stuart Insurance at Stuart dot com or visit us online Stuart Insurance dot com. And if you are a graduate from Texas A and M, what number should they call? Eight six six seven nine eight two eight two seven. Stuart Insurance dot com. Thank you, John Bramlett. Thank you, Bill. Always a pleasure. 
And let's welcome back, as we wrap up the show, Mariella Massa. Mariella, welcome back. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. President of the Houston Mortgage Bankers Association and so many other things that you're doing. Let's tell people, what else would you like them to know before we close out the show? Yeah, two things. So May 6th for the Houston Mortgage Bankers Association, we're having our golf tournament. We'd love to have you out there and join us. May 26th, we're having the Nancy Owens Breast Cancer Foundation Cocktails for the Cure at the Kirby's Ice House and Memorial. Uh, You can find out more information at nancyowens.org. We'd love to have you out there, 5 to 8. Thanks so much. nancyowens.org. Let's tell them the website of the HMBA again. Absolutely. hmba.wildapricot.org. Thanks again. Oh, your app. And my last last but not least, certainly, finhouse.com, F-I-N-H-O-U-S. The latest real estate app to help your home buyers through the home buying They're process. Downloading it right now. Thank you for being on the show. Thank Here he you. is, Rodney. Welcome back. What Thank else you. should we know before we close things out here? Don't assume. Don't assume that you can't afford a house. Don't assume that your house won't sell. Call me, and I'll be happy to give you all the information you need to move on to the next stage of your life. Rodney Turin. They can call you. It's so easy in Northwest Houston. It's going to be awesome. And Rodney, what's the phone number up there? Eight three two. Seven two three zero seven four zero. One other quick thing. As you see buyers that are out there right now, how many of them are you seeing coming to your company from, let's say, out, out of the state of Texas? Um, my buyers right now, we're probably running about 25% out of state, but a lot of them are here moving locally. How many of the sellers are leaving the state that you're seeing? Uh, actually, I've had one, two, three recent sellers leaving the state. Do you know where they're going? One is going to Boston, one went to Kansas City, and the other is undetermined. And how can people reach you? 832-723-0740. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Amanda Turin, here she is. Hey, Amanda, before we close things out, what else? If you are an agent who's looking for a team or interested in a team aspect, we want to talk to you. If you are someone who is looking for that next job, somebody who is retired and thinking, I want something else to do, and you've ever thought about real estate, call us. Call me at 281-989-6011. We want to talk to you about the Tureen Real Estate Group and what that looks like coming and working with us. What if I want to call? I could be a greeter at the door, maybe? Sure, Bill. We'll have you anytime. We we have great coffee. And there you go. The phone number again is? 281-989-6011. And one more time, Lynn Riddle, congratulations. She's with Stuart Title. That's right. Business Thank development you. officer you. doing tremendous work all the time and an inspiration to the others on our team. Lynn, before we close things out, what else? Well, you can like our Facebook page, um, Stuart Title Champions. I post all of our events, and you have my team member information. Or you can just email me anytime you need to use me as a resource for real estate needs. Our Stuart Title tools also. Call me. Right there. Lynn Riddle. And the number is? 346-225-7993. 346-225-7993. And thank you all for listening to Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title. Till next week, Stuart.com forward slash radio. That's right, Stuart.com forward slash radio. We will see you then, and thank you for listening. In today's litigious society, it is imperative to have the proper insurance to offset the many risks facing your business, especially if you're a real estate broker. Your errors and omissions and cyber liability insurance can help limit the threat of these risks if you know what to look for. Contact Stuart Insurance to be confident your brokerage can withstand these risks. Stewart Insurance, 866-798-2827. StewartInsurance.com. That's StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827.